two large law firms merged, creating conflicts of interest. The merged mega firm now represents plaintiffs in an action against defendants who were also clients of the firm. Should the firm be disqualified? That's the question in Western Sugar Cooperative versus Archer Daniels Midland. Conflicts of interest can disqualify an attorney from representing a client. This case involves both concurrent conflicts and former client conflicts. A concurrent conflict of interest involving two current clients generally results in automatic disqualification. A former client conflict, which arises if a former client has materially adverse interests to a current client, results in disqualification if there is a substantial relationship between the matters handled in the representations. A client's waiver may cure some conflicts, as we'll explore more later. Now to the facts. In 2011, Western Sugar Cooperative and a group of sugar producers sued Archer Daniels Midland and a group of high-fructose corn syrup producers for false advertising. The sugar plaintiffs claimed the defendants misled consumers by calling their product corn sugar. The sugar plaintiffs were represented by Squire Sanders. Patton Boggs, which we'll call Patton, was longtime counsel to two of the defendants, Tate and Ingredion. Patton represented Tate continuously. Patton represented Ingredion on an on-again, off-again basis, providing advice on whether high-fructose corn syrup could be characterized as natural in advertising. In 2014, Squire Sanders merged with Patton. The two firms formed Squire Patton Boggs, which we'll call Squire. The conflict went undetected in the merger, and Squire remained counsel for the sugar plaintiffs. Tate and Ingredion moved the district court to disqualify Squire. The court treated Squire's representation of Tate as a concurrent conflict. Squire sought to avoid disqualification on the basis of consent. It argued that Tate had waived the conflict with the sugar plaintiffs because Tate had, decades earlier, signed an advanced waiver, broadly consenting to all future conflicts. The court treated Ingredion as posing a former client conflict. Squire's predecessor wasn't handling a matter for Ingredion when the firms merged in 2014, and Ingredion's engagement agreement specified that the representation would end each time Patton concluded handling a matter. Thus, Squire argued it could represent the sugar plaintiffs because Ingredion was merely a former client, and the representation didn't substantially relate to the false advertising litigation.